testimony will do. Hallelujah. Come on now, it's a great day. Amen. Can you give Jesus praise? Hallelujah. God is faithful. Let me read this to you, church, as we continue to worship the Lord. This is um, verse 10. Um, Paul is talking about an offering. And he said, and here is my advice about what is best for you in this matter. Last year, you were the first not only to give, but also to have the desire to do so. Now finish the work so that your eager willingness to do it may be matched by your completion of it according to your means. For if the willingness is there, the gift is acceptable according to what one has and not according to what he does not have. Listen to this. Our desire is not that others might be relieved while you are hard-pressed, but that there might be equality. At the present time, your plenty will supply what they need so that in turn their plenty will supply what you need. Then there will be equality. As it is written, he who gathered much did not have too much, and he who gathered little did not have too little. Hallelujah. In this verses, Paul is talking to the Corinthian church, and he's talking about an offering that they had planned on giving to him, that they had committed to him. And what is important as you continue to study this chapter, uh, chapter 9 in Corinthians is that what he said to them is that he goes, I want you to give, not necessarily because I have the need. I want you to give that it may go to your account. That it may go to your account. And the reason why I say this that's so important and, 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 and any parent would, would, would truly understand this, do you ever teach your children a principle and they may not have, may not have wanted to learn that principle, but you wanted to teach it and drill it in them because you wanted them to be blessed by the information that you're giving them. Amen? Amen. My father taught me ever since I was a little boy. He told me, he said this statement. He said, nothing's for free. I says, well, that's not true. And I fought it for years. He told me, he says, nothing's free. He goes, if, you, if you're going to go up in life, he goes, you got to work hard. He goes, don't rely on other people to do it. He goes, you got to work hard. He says, nothing's free. And the, and the example that I used as a little boy is that some, uh, some, some, one of my neighbors gave me some gum, so it was free. So I said to him, I was like, you know, I would, in my mind, I didn't tell my dad this, but I said, I said, no, it was, uh, he's, he's wrong. There are things that are for free because someone just gave me this and I got it for free. And, and even later on in life, I challenged it because I was thinking, yeah, but salvation is free. And I started doing that in my mind. But do you know that salvation is not free? It was bought with a price. That gum was purchased before it was given to me. So there is, so there is nothing that's free. We need to be thankful for everything that the Lord does. And as you give today and as you purpose in your heart, you know, many of you have, you know, were at home and you said, you know what, this is, Lord, this is for you. And I want you to know, church, that as we give today in that spirit of worship, I want you to know that the Lord receives that gift. It is a pleasing, the Bible says it's a pleasing aroma to his nostrils when we give out of a good heart, when we give with joy that it may go to your account. Amen? I want to pray with you real quick before the ushers. They're, gonna, they're here to serve you. If you need an envelope, they want to give you one. Amen? But I want to pray with you. Let's pray right now. Father, I ask you right now to deal with us. And I ask you right now, Father, that you would move on our heart, Father. I ask you, Father, as the pastor of this church, that you would bless my brother and my sister, Lord. God, your word says that you would multiply seed when we plant it. Father, I pray, Father. Maybe I may not understand that whole thing about the account, but you said you wanted it to go towards our account. That means you're keeping track. So I ask you, Father God, that today as we sow our seed, 
that first we would do it with joy. We would do it because we honor and worship you, Lord. And secondly, Lord, I thank you that there's nothing wrong with having in mind that harvest is around the corner. That as we hold our seed, that our prayer would be, I will see you soon. Because the harvest will come. This is good ground. So, Father, as we give today, just touch our heart. We give you praise. I'm going to ask the ushers to come. And if you need an envelope uh, right now, I want you to just lift up your hand. We want to hand you that envelope. And we also, if, if, if there's also a space there. I love this church that we're so technology driven. But thank God that we also have the room there where you can, uh, if you want to use your, your debit card, your credit card there. And we're, we're uh, I know a lot of churches that don't do that. And I'm blown away by that. So I thank God that we have that ability, uh, uh, availability to you. Amen. Amen. I'm going to, I need one, sir. Thank you so much. Amen. 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 Praise God. I want the ushers to, to wait a moment and give the people time. If you're making out a check, you can make it out to NDCV. Amen. I want to give you a moment right now as we... Just get this offering ready. Hallelujah. We bless you, Jesus. We bless you. We're going to enter powerful time of worship right now. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Can you slip up your hand if you need another moment? Can you slip up your hand? Just ushers, if you could just take a peek around. We still have some people writing. Amen. Has everyone been served? Has everyone been served? Oh, right here. Praise you, Jesus. Amen. Oh, Father, we give joyfully to you. We ask that you bless this offering. We love you. And we glorify you, Father. Release your presence today as we worship you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's all stand to our feet. We're going to worship the Lord. worship you this morning. Yes. Thank you, God, because you are Alpha and Omega. Thank you, God, because in the middle of it all, your hand never leaves us. Thank you, God, for guiding us through every single step of the way. So we worship you this morning because you are good. great unknown where feet may fail and there I find you in the mystery in oceans deep my faith will stand and I will call upon your name oceans rise and my soul will rest in your embrace for I waters your sovereign hand will be my guide where feet may fail and fear surrounds me you've never failed and you won't start now so I rise my soul will rest in your embrace 
and he paid the price for you so it doesn't matter what you're going through Jesus paid the price for that Jesus pays the pride for it he paid the price for that disease he paid the price for that loneliness he paid the price for that depression he paid the price when nobody is around he paid the price for you so say it I just want you to just take a moment. I want you to make I want you to make the bridge in this song your prayer. I want you to just take a moment, and I really don't want to be religious about this, but I know that all of us, every single one of us, need to be led by the Spirit of God. And I just want to loop that, Lathan, if we could. Spirit, lead me, for my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you would call me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander. Come on. That my faith would be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. Come on, make this prayer, I see. Let's, let's just repeat that. Let's just make it your prayer right now. Sing it out with her. Make it your prayer.
Come on, sing it. Wherever you would call me. Take me deeper. Take me deeper than my fear could ever walk. Yes. And my faith be made stronger in the presence of my So I will call upon your name. rise my soul will rest in your embrace I am you are hallelujah spirit of God you're welcome in this place we invite you Holy Spirit without you Holy Spirit in reality all we are is a club just a group of people that get together and it's a lot of religions that have a lot of songs they have their own worship songs and they have their own gods they meet at certain times all around the world but the difference between every other religion and the Christian faith is the presence of the Lord there's no other religion that can claim that the presence of the Lord of, or of their God comes in their meeting times. The only place that we will feel the presence of a real and almighty God is in where Jesus is glorified and lifted up. So Jesus, we lift you up, we glorify you, we declare today you're the one that gets all the glory and all the honor. We did not come to glorify man. We did not come to worship false gods. We did not come to glorify musicians or leaders or anybody. We come only to glorify you, Jesus. So just receive it today. I ask you to anoint my lips that I would speak the words that you've given me, Lord you've given for this church, that we would grow this church, Father, that we would influence, Father God, the world and change our city, Father. So have your way today, God. We open up our hearts right now. We invite you, Holy Spirit, to do what you do, and that is to confirm the word as it is preached. I don't rely on any abilities of my own, but I rely on you, Holy Spirit, to confirm and teach and counsel today. So do what you do, Holy Spirit. Let me be led by you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on, give God praise. Amen. Amen. You could be seated. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, guys. Lathan, just stay for a moment. I, I, I want to say this to... Um, you know, to the church. I want to say that um, Joanne and I, one of the things that we feel so, so, Lathan, can you play something for me, my brother? I love you, man. Come on. Thank you, thank you. He's, he's got to earn his pay. <laughs> I love you, man. I'm just playing. <clears throat> you know, uh, one of the things that I just, I, I feel so blessed about, you know, at the church here, and, 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 and I just, every time we would talk about New Dawn, I know that God connected us to you. I know that God connected us to a people. That's what we felt, but I, I can't lie and also say that it is such a blessing to have powerful praise and worship. It is a blessing. You know, a lot of churches don't, most churches do not have what we have. And, I, and I'm not even trying to be flattering. I'm just saying that it's the truth. There's pastors that struggle to have the quality, you know, of, of praise and worship that we have here at our church. And I, and I want to, yes, amen. And, 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 and I want to I wanna say this, that I believe that we have anointed singers and anointed, an anointed band. They're not just talented. 
And um, and I want to I want to say to the musicians, and I do want to say to all the singers that a beautiful voice. And I'm just going to get real with you. A beautiful voice doesn't impress me at all. There are a dime a dozen, especially in this city. Um, but worshipers do impress me. And if you're going to sing for God, be a worshiper. Be a worshiper because you'll tell the difference right away. There was a, um, a man in the 1800 something in England and uh, he was a great orator. He was a great speaker. People would go from everywhere to hear this guy speak. So one day he comes to town and he goes and he, oh, he reads Psalm 23. And he starts, the Lord is my shepherd. And he's standing on a, on a big wooden podium thing. And he's, he says, the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. And he goes through the whole thing. And by the end, the people just cheer and just start cheering and cheering for this guy because he's just such a great speaker the way he read it and then the the speaker says oh we have the reverend we have the reverend here and and, and that's with us today he says reverend come on why don't you come and read psalm 23 and the reverend comes up you know an older gentleman gets up there and he starts reading he says the lord is my shepherd and i shall not want and he starts reading and by the end, everyone's crying. And so the guy says, I don't get it. When he's done, he says, I don't get it. He says, I was, you know, I read the same exact thing you do, but they cheered, but then you read it, and people are brought to tears. He says, well, what, what's the difference? He says, I know the shepherd. I know the shepherd. Come on. So what I'm saying is whatever you do for God, Make sure you know the shepherd. Amen. amen. That's so good. We can just say amen right now. <laughs> We're not going to say amen yet. Amen. Amen. That's a good word. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. If you didn't say it, I was going to say it, but that's good. That's it. Matthew chapter 16. Thank you, Lathan, my brother. You're so awesome. I haven't worked out for two months, but my biceps are going to grow like yours, okay? All right, it's good. Mason's been working out. He's been sneaking those workouts in. Amen. Church, I'm so excited about today. Amen. I want to continue where we've been talking about binding and loosening. Amen. I want to bless you today, and it's going to help you no matter what you do in life. It's going to help you. It's going to help you to grow. Many of you already know these verses, but it's always good. You know, there's, every time there's something new in God, you know, when you read Scripture, there's always revelation on what is going on. I have so many places that, that I would like to go, but what I want to do is I want to go ahead and I want to break this down. I want to break this down. And I, just, just to recap, in Matthew chapter 16 and Matthew chapter 18, the Lord talks about Binding and loosening, the keys of the kingdom. Everyone say the keys of the kingdom. This is very, very important. I will say this, church. We are on a little bit of a journey, you and I. We're going to be talking probably, I, I would say, at least a month. We're going to be talking about the kingdom. Most people do not understand the kingdom. The message that Jesus preached, the message that Paul preached, the message that Peter preached, if you read, go to Acts, in the beginning of the church, what did they preach? They preached the message of the kingdom. And most of us just believe that the kingdom is just heaven. That is wrong. It's false. Okay? And we're going to talk about, because God has called us to establish what? His kingdom on the earth. What does that look like? What does that look like? Because, and remember this, it is God's will to build our church. It is God's will. So, so Peter has a question that is asked by the Lord, a very important question that we all have to answer. Amen? So I want you to go to Matthew chapter 16. We're going to be, start reading in verse 13, and we're going to go through this again. It says, when Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, who do men say 
that the Son of Man is? Or who do, who do men say that I am? Now, he asks a question. He says, who does everybody else say that I am? So if you ask right now this question in a university, well, who do people say that Jesus is in a university? Well, he was a great prophet, a great leader, established a religion that people are still following today. Some people may say he's the Christ. He's the savior of the world. Other people say he was a good man. Other people say he's a killer. Come on now. That's the truth. Well, he was saying, well, who do, who do other people say that I am? He says, so, well, you know, and, and listen to what it is. They, so, they, so they said, some say John the Baptist. John the Baptist. Now, I want you to look at these characters because it's very important. Who do, they, who do they say that I am? Some say John the Baptist, some Elijah, and others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. Now, this is important because if, so, if, you, if someone asks you, well, who do you say you are? Well, they go by your actions, and they try to judge you by your actions. Well, some say, he's funny. Some say, he's, he's witty. Some say, she's, you know, the life of the party. Some say, he's very controlling. He's very dominating. He's rude. He's not nice. You follow what I'm saying? People go by their actions. So they said, well, some say he's like John the Baptist. Well, what did John the Baptist preach? Repent. For the kingdom of God is what? Near. He didn't say it's here. He said it's near. This is important. I want to shout when I just say that one thing. He said the kingdom of God is near. Because why? Because Jesus was coming to establish his kingdom. Remember Jesus' ministry, when John the Baptist was preaching this, Jesus did not start his ministry yet. It was when Jesus was baptized and the Holy Spirit came upon him as a dove that when he came up out of the water, his ministry began. Right, church? Okay? So this is, this is very, very important. So he says, well, some say John the Baptist. So, so, so we can say the way John the Baptist talked about repentance, Jesus talked about repentance. You must repent. Jesus did it. Elijah, this is great. What was Elijah known for? Power. He was, a, he was known for miracles. He was known for doing incredible things. Elijah the prophet. What did Jesus do? He did miracles, signs, and wonders. What about Jeremiah? Man, you need to pray before you read the book of Jeremiah. There's a lot of prophecy, you know. So Jesus was very prophetic. He was very, you know, he was bringing the old and he was taking it, it, us into the new and he was joining the two, right? Creating out of one man, he'd say he was taking the, the Gentiles and the Jews and he was making them one. People who were not of Jewish race, and people who were of the bloodline of, of, of Christ, he was making them one, right? So they said, well, some say you're like those guys, and that's a good thing. That's a good thing when people compare you to some good people, right? But then he said, but it was, so those are good answers. But he says, he said to them, but who do you, who do you guys say that I am? Simon Peter answers, you are the Christ the son of the living God. Do you know that as a pastor, one of the hardest things to get people to believe is that God is good? No, it's the truth. Because some people believe God is bad. Like they still serve him out of fear, but they believe he's bad. He, they believe he does this, he does that, he causes earthquakes, he causes all these different things. It's just God. It's an act of God. Even the insurance people call it an act of God. God already took out his wrath on mankind, on who? On his son. His son received our sin. His son. How about Jewish uh, Sabbaths? Uh, I'm sorry, Jewish uh, ceremonies. Do you know that Jesus took all of that? And he says, I am the Sabbath in Hebrews. He says, I'm the Sabbath. That's why when someone argues with you like a Seventh-day Adventist and stuff like that, they say, no, no, you can only worship on Saturdays. Let me tell you something. Every day is a Sabbath in Jesus. Every day is a Sabbath rest in Jesus. Amen? They just haven't had the revelation. All right? So this is very important. He says, you're the Christ, the Son of the living God. Well, that word Christ means what? Anointed one. 
So I believe that you're the anointed one. I believe that you're the one that is sent. You are the son of God. You're the one that's come to restore me. You're the one that's come to fix me. You're the one that's come to forgive me. You are the one. Amen. So because Peter had this revelation, Jesus answered and said to him, you're blessed. Blessed are you, Simon Barjona or Peter, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my father who is in heaven. Do you know how many times I heard about Jesus? And, 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 th- and I believed in God and I believed in Jesus, but it was amazing when that person shared with me about Jesus that it was like I didn't understand everything, but I did in here understand by the Holy Spirit that you know what? I'm a sinner and I need a Savior. It was by the Spirit of God. And you know what's so funny? The Spirit of God is always trying to confirm the Word when we preach it. We shared about this a couple of weeks ago. It's not your job to get people to like you. It's your job just to share the Word, do it in love, and let the Holy Spirit do His job. You don't have to beat people over the head with the Bible. Just share the Word. You know, when I was leaving... There was a gentleman in my neighborhood. Um, I will tell you that I absolutely tried to say hi to him. And on two, for sure, you know how like you, you, you do something and you're trying to believe the best in the situation? I can guarantee you this brother two times totally did not answer when I said, hi, how are you? How you doing? He, he looked at me and turned away. And he looked like a rough, rough character. When I tell you, he, he looked like some kind of marine or something like that. I mean, he just looked like you, like you didn't want to cross this guy, you know. And he would go out and do his exercises. And me and Joanne have seen him at the beach or seen him in Publix, which is a, a restaurant, a, a supermarket over there. They don't have Publix here. And um, so, you know, and, and so here I am filling this container with all my stuff, filling the container with all my things. And this guy comes over. And I said, hey, how are you? And he finally says something. He goes, oh, he goes, so you're, so you're moving. And I said, I said, yeah. And I even said, I said, how you doing? He goes, better than you, because I'm not moving. That's what he said. That's literally what he said. He goes, better than you. Um, I'm not moving. And um, we start talking, and I'll tell you, this guy, is re- you can tell he is rough around the edges. Yeah. He will tell you exactly what he thinks on his mind. There is no, he has no filter. Yeah. There's no filter. He tells you exactly how he feels. Yeah. He tells you about, he'll tell you how he feels about every single person in, that he knows in the neighborhood, right? So we're talking in the building, the little bridge right there, and then here I am trying to uh, pack this thing and fill it up to the top as much as I could, and and uh, I just, I, you know, I said, yeah, I may not have another chance. This is Thursday. And I said to him, I, said, I didn't even know his name. I don't even know his name. And I said, man, I said, let me ask you something. I said, I may never see you again. I said, I just got to ask you. I said, how, what, what is, how is your relationship with God? How do you, do you believe in God? Do you know, you know? And he just started, he goes, yeah, I believe in God. He goes, but I can't stand the church. He says, I don't think we need church. And he started on his whole thing. And he goes, and then he started on like, and how can a good God, you know, do all these things? And, 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 and you know how many people have died in the name of religion? And, and, all, and he just starts on this whole thing with his F-bombs and all kinds of different things. You know, he's like f and away on everything, you know. <laughs> Everything's a capital F, you know. And, and, and. He's, you know, sitting there telling me, and he goes, they're all shysters and crooks, and the church is garbage and all these different things. And he's going on and on and on. I was like, you know what, man? He goes, I told him, I said, you know what? People have flaws. I says, but what about Jesus? I said, well, how is your relationship with Jesus? He put it back on the church. He's like, I feed that person, and I feed this person, and I feed this person, and, and everything, and um, um so what happens is we go into this mode of I'm a good person. Because you start looking at yourself it's like, well, you know what? I'm good. I never killed nobody. I never did this, you know. I never did that. I never did this, you know. It's amazing when you ask people, they go on, they tell you what they haven't done, you know. 
And so, yeah, I feed, I feed, that's my thing. He goes, I feed people. I feed the homeless. And I said, man, I said, that's good. That's good, you know. And when I tell you that this guy's got a, I mean, a mean face, like when he's telling me like he can't stand, he really hates the church. <laughs> I mean, he's, you know. So we're talking and, and everything like that. And I says, well, listen, man, I said, I, just, I said I say, I'm telling you this because I care about you. I believe, you know, he goes, uh, I, said, I said, I believe Jesus, you know, died on the cross for you. He loves you. And he goes, oh, he goes, yeah. And he goes, that heaven and hell stuff. He goes, no, come on. Are you kidding me? He goes, no, how, how could a good God send people to hell and, and all these different things, right? So this is the funny part. Then he goes to me. That we, I don't know, we, we talked about a couple more things, and I've tried to get some more in there. And I didn't get mad at the guy. I didn't go up to him and look at him mean and say, you're wrong. You're, a, you're, you're going to hell or anything like that. I just tried to tell him about Jesus. Just try to tell him about the love of God. Now, have I told people, like, I, 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 listen, Joanne was right there. I called this one guy out. I was pr- in the middle of preaching. Listen to this. I'll get back to my neighbor. Hold on. Listen. <laughs> I was in the middle of preaching. And the Lord gave me a word for a guy sitting, sitting over on the right. He was huge. He was probably like six foot six. And I will tell you, I hugged him before service. Never seen him before in my life. I will tell you that this man had the power to crush me. No, I'm serious. You know how you hug? Like you get, and I mean, this guy was just, he was from Australia. Gigantic guy. Sitting there with, her, with his wife was Brazilian. Never seen him. Ne- don't know anything about him. Didn't even remember his name. When we did the greeting. And I'm preaching and I'm... Da- God get, I said, hey. I said, you come here. Just like that. And he comes up, this big old dude. And I'm sitting there looking at him. And God, I tell him. It says, God is telling me to tell you, you have no more chances. I said, you serve God now? Or, he goes, this is the last time. Just like that. The guy bends over starts crying, weeping right at the altar. Just ball, he's just bawling at the altar. And I call his wife, and I put my hand on her throat, and I says, you will sing again. And she just as loses it. and everything. I don't know, I've never seen these people in my life. And everything. I says, you will sing again. You'll use, that, you'll use your voice for the Lord. What happened with her? She got hurt in church. She used to sing for the Lord. And she got hurt in church, and she wasn't using her, her gift for, for the Lord. This guy gets up, and I, says, I said, now, church, let's pray. We prayed for him and everything. He told me, he says, Pastor Irwin, he goes, I have served the Lord, backslided, served the Lord, backslided, served the Lord, backslided. He kept going back. He was like a seesaw. And, I, and I'm telling you, you know what it takes to know? You better know that you're telling someone that the Lord said, this is your last chance. You better serve the Lord. You know, I saw him uh, not too long ago after uh, that word was like three, three and a half years ago or something like that. He's still serving God. Hallelujah. Amen. But getting back to my neighbor, who do you, who, you know, who do, who do you, well, he already told me who he thinks God is. Amen. So the blessing of who God is, is he's not going to experience that right now in this moment. We pray for his salvation. Guess what? His sister was a born-again Christian. He told me. So you know someone's praying for him, right? So here I am watering that seed. Right now, he cannot experience everything that the Lord is. Why? Because he doesn't have that revelation of him. It's not that God is holding back blessing because, oh, you're going you're gonna to talk about me like that, so I'm not going to bless you. That's not what it's about. That when you have a revelation of the Christ, the Son of God, there's things that automatically enter your life. And in this situation, for the very first time in the existence of eternity, someone is recorded to have the revelation of who Jesus is. The Christ, the Son of the living God. Peter, you're blessed. You're blessed. Let, let's go on and see what it says. Verse 17, Jesus answers, said, Then blessed are you, Simon Barjono, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock 
I will build my church. Now, we're not going to build a church on Peter. What is he talking about? We're building it on the confession that Jesus is the Christ, the anointed one, the Son of God. Amen? Which New Dawn Christian Village does. We're, we're, we're here because of Jesus. Amen? Listen, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Okay? So, if we're going to build our church and we build it on Christ... He's saying that there's a power there that the gates of hell can't come against us if we build it on Christ. Well, you say, well, Pastor Irwin, every church that has the cross in front of it is building it on Christ. Not true. Well, you say, well, how, how is that not true? How many churches have you been to where the man of God is glorified more than Jesus is glorified? I'm sorry, let me hide over here. Or you throw a stone. How many churches is sister so-and-so glorified because of her voice? Then Jesus is glorified. How many, how many churches have you been to where the names of other people are mentioned more than the name of Jesus? How many churches have you been to where their facility is bigger than God? Come on now. You have to fight to build it on Christ, the Son of the living God. You have to fight to build it on Christ, the anointed one. I told, I, I think I told Franco, uh, 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 I think it was Franco, I, I, I told him, I said, listen, I said, I give you permission. If I ever start being prideful, just cold cock me, just knock me the heck out, you know, so that when I get up, I remember, yeah, that's right, it's about... Jesus, the Christ, <laughs> I, said, I said, don't ever let me get there. Don't ever let me, listen, and we all say, oh, no, no, no. It's so, listen, everybody starts out right. You think these, these preachers and, and different people, you think they, they, they went into the ministry with bad intentions? No, they didn't. They went in with a good heart. They wanted to help people, but all of a sudden, the applause, the fame, the notoriety, and all this stuff starts coming in. Oh, I know so-and-so. Yeah, the mayor called me. You know, this person who's, who's famous singer came to, to visit me and this movie star and all that garbage. Let me tell you something. There's only one thing that matters, and that's his presence. You got to fight for his presence. You got to fight for his presence. You got to fight. Listen, I'll say to you that you're a Peter, and on this rock, I will build my church. So if we're going to build the church, we're going to build it on Christ. The gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And here we go. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. In, in your Bibles, you may have a little, a little letter there, like a little A, and when you look that up, or when you look that up in a Strong's Concordance or anything, it will say this, will have been bound. So meaning what I bind on earth will have been bound in heaven. What I loose on earth will have been loosed in heaven. This is very important when you're talking about the kingdom. Because when you're talking about the kingdom, if you want to understand the kingdom, you have to understand that in this moment, church, when Jesus is preaching, there is a difference between heaven and earth. In this moment, the earth is not a part of God's kingdom. Come on, you can email me later if you want. Let me build on this. The earth is not a part of... You said, no, 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 God owns everything. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible says that Satan was the God of this world. We gave up our authority and our dominion to the enemy. When, when would God come? God didn't come too often. He would come, you know, he would kick some butt, and then, you know, and he would use prophet so-and-so, and, -so, and wh where would his, listen, come on now, this is good, I love this. Where would his presence come from? It would come from above and come down, right? Where does it come from now? Us. 
His presence comes out of us. Because when we receive Jesus Christ, if you're born again, if you receive Jesus Christ, what does the Bible say? The Spirit of God comes to make its home in you. What was the promise that Jesus said, well, listen, now listen, Jesus already died. Now think, think with me for a moment. Jesus already was crucified, resurrected. He appeared before them all, and you would think it would be like, let's roast some marshmallows, kumbaya, and then that's it. It's all done. Now tell everyone about me. That's not what he said. What did he say? Go wait for the promise that my father has for you. Why was this important? It's very important. It wasn't just about the Holy Spirit coming in power and people speaking in tongues and miracles and all that. It was about his presence coming where there's no filter and now whatever, there's no distance between heaven and earth. Church, hear me. There is no distance between heaven and earth. There's none. Jesus was the bridge. So what you will bind, he was saying, what you will bind on earth will have been bound in heaven. Why? Because there's no distance. This is huge. Because a lot of times when we pray, we pray like we're talking far, you know, we, we, we're like light years. Like we're like, God, if you would just do this. God, if you would just have heard my prayer. There's no distance. True story. God's on a true story. And I think I put it in my healing book, whatever, and, and everything. This lady used to cut my hair at Supercuts. Uh, uh, start, her name started with a V. Uh, oh, Vivian. Thank you, babe. Vivian. See, she's already helping, helping me out and stuff like that, helping me to be, look good. Listen. Yeah. <laughs> Help me. Yes. <laughs> Listen. This girl, Vivian... Uh, Vietnamese girl used to cut my hair in Tampa when I lived in Tampa. One time we had to travel, and, uh, uh, and, and, and let me backtrack. This, this guy used to cut my hair, and I called him, and I was like, hey, man, I said, I got to travel. Can you squeeze me in? And he was always busy. And he was like, no, I can't squeeze you in. I was like, oh. So I just went to Supercuts, and I, said, I was just praying. I said, Jesus, please don't let there be any marks on my head or anything, you know. <laughs> So I go to Supercuts, this girl Vivian cuts my hair. And when I was done, she cut it great. Uh, so I stopped going to the guy because this was right down the street from my house. So Vivian would cut my hair and everything like that. And one day I went in there and she sad. She's a Buddhist. So, so she, was, uh, she was really sad. And I said, Vivian, I said, uh, what's wrong with you? And she like teared up. She goes, my father, they found the cancers all in his stomach all kinds of cancers in his stomach. And they only gave him a little bit to live. I says, well, Vivian, I shared how the Lord healed me. I shared about my testimony on healing. And, and I says, you know, and I said, I believe Jesus, I, I believe Jesus can heal your dad. And she says, yeah, but you're not there to pray for him. I says, no, no, no. Listen, there's no distance in the realm of the spirit. I says, so let's pray right now. And she told me before I prayed, she says, if Jesus heals my father, I will serve Jesus and not Buddha. I said, I said come here. In supercuts, we went behind this like fake wall. We went behind this fake wall thing and we went there. And I said, Father, I said, listen, you better start, you better start learning this. This is important because you are more powerful than what you know. The, the problem is you don't think you're powerful. That's the problem. We don't think that we're powerful people. I said, I said, uh, Father, I said, there's no distance in the spirit. And I said, I lay my hands on her dad's stomach right now. I put my hands on my stomach. I said, I declare those cancers to go in the name of Jesus. I said, I pray for your supernatural healing. Jesus, be glorified. Let her know, Jesus, that it's you. That's it. Big prayer. She hugged me. She was crying and everything like that. Whatever. This is what she. <laughs> this is so funny. I come back a month later. No, a month and a half. I, I had let my hair go. I know. I, I'm sorry. I'm a details person. I tell story. I like details. I don't know about you. I don't like the little quick stuff. I mean, I like the details. The details make everything. This is about a month and a half later, and I'm throwing out. You know what I'm saying? 
<laughs> I said, I need that fade quick, you know? <laughs> I said, that gel ain't helping me no more. Listen, so I go in there, and I want to tell you the place is packed. Places, I mean, people sitting everywhere, places packed. And I'm just like, man, because I didn't want to wait, you know? I'm thinking it's always it's slow around this time, and I go in there, and there's a whole bunch of people. So I walk in. Vivian's cutting this, this dude's hair. She's in the first chair. She's cutting there, and it's like a step. You got to go up, and then there's the chairs, right? She's like cutting. She looks down. She does a double take. She sees me. She drops her scissors, runs over, and she goes, oh, my God. Oh, my God. She hugs me. Everyone in Supercuts is looking at me like, is this guy, like, famous or something? Like, you know? And I'm just looking around, and, and, and here's this, this small little Vietnamese girl hugging me. And I'm just like, I mean, she's sque- like bear hugging me. And she goes, and she, pull, she, she grabs me like this, you know? She pulls me off, and she goes, they went and did an exam. There's no more cancer in my dad's stomach. There's no cancer. And this is what she told me. She said, I will serve Jesus. And she said that for as long as, as I work here, she goes, you will never have to pay for a haircut. That's the truth. I would go in there. I would try to give her money. She wouldn't take any money. She would not take money. Until I left Tampa, I, I, I got my hair cut for free. And her father, perfectly healthy. Isn't that good? Hallelujah. So... So, so let, me, let me say this to you. So, so Marcus, come here real quick, Marcus. I want to do something with you. I just want to just show you a simple thing. This is not a good rope. And we're going to try not to mess this up because Tina will hurt me. This is Tina's cord, okay? Listen, so put your, put your arms out like this, okay? Come on over here real quick so people can see you, all right? You guys can see over there? You guys good? Okay, so listen. So what you, what you bind on earth, okay? What you bind on earth is bound in heaven or will have already been bound in heaven. Okay, now listen. Now what you loose on earth will have been loosed in heaven. Now let's go back. Let's go to the, put your arms up. Let's go to the binding part. Now I want to I get your eyes off of him being a man because you'll be like, okay, well, do you, are you talking about binding people? Now listen. <laughs> listen. I bind... The spirit of sickness from Vivian's father in Jesus' name. What I bind, so, so, so this guy who's running free, now God says he's given me keys to bind him. What does the Bible say? We wrestle not against what? Flesh and blood, but against principalities powers, spiritual wickedness in high places, the rulers of darkness of this world. So here's the thing. So all of a sudden, have you ever gone, you don't, if, you, if you start losing the feeling in your fingers, let me know. <laughs> Listen, have you ever gone somewhere and then someone out of nowhere is just nasty to you? Like for no reason, yes. nasty. Just na- they're just nasty for no, I mean, you didn't do anything. Nasty to you. Listen, many times that's the spirit. Now listen, and don't get too super spiritual. Sometimes they're just having a bad day. They're just having a bad day. That's why you just got to be careful how you treat people. They'll be like, oh my, did you see the way she looked at me? Did you see how she treated me? And listen, I'm huge on customer service, man. I have a pet peeve when people don't, don't treat me good on customer service. I mean, I was talking to, to and I'll say who it is. I was talking to the, to the um, uh, uh, I shouldn't say it anyway. <laughs> I was talking to the car rental place, and I was like, listen, man. I said, can I ask you something? Is there, is there a manager there who can tell me, like, we have computers these days. Just put my number in, and my information will pop up. I'm telling this guy this because he's, he's, he's putting me on hold. He goes, hold on a second. And, this, and I'm like, are you crazy? <laughs> okay, that's another story. But listen. Loose me on so, Yeah, no, listen. So, so listen. Listen. Man, I bind that 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 spirit of animosity that's trying to come against me. Hey, listen, how about this one? Man, I just can't seem to break this cycle. I'm a tither, I'm a giver, and it seems like I get money, like I get a blessing in one door, 
and then the back doors open and the money just goes right out the back. <laughs> Hear me, listen. Well, hey, listen, but God knew, that is so good. God knew the dishwasher was going to break. So he sent the money in advance. Listen, let me say this to you. That's good for a season. You shouldn't have a cycle where it just comes and then it just goes. You get blessed, your tire breaks, your tire pops. Hear me now. You, if you, listen, who do men say that I am? Oh, well, he's just the backdoor Jesus. It just, it's just going to come and it's just going to go. Whatever will be, will be. Que sera, sera. Ah. Or the Bible says that you'll leave an inheritance for your children's children. So which one do you want to, which one do you want to go? Oh, well, God just feeds the birds. He, he takes care of the little birds. He'll just take care of me. It doesn't matter if Social Security's not around. It's okay. He takes care of the little birds. Yeah. He will. He's also given you wisdom to establish wealth on the earth. He's given you power, Deuteronomy 8.18 says, to establish his covenant on the earth. So listen, you can go towards, you know what we do now? You're all right, Marcus, right? Okay, good, good, all right. <laughs> listen, you can, I know people like this, you can totally side with the whole like floating, just, I just love God and no matter what happens, everything's okay. He gave you the keys to bind and to loose things. Listen, he gave you the keys. Listen, listen, he gave you the keys to be a superhero. Because there's power in you and people need what you have. People need what you want to give them. Well, God wants to use you to touch them. So listen, binding and loosening is just that. I bind, listen, how many times I ministered and, and, uh, to a, uh, to a, and, and it's so sad that it's usually a young lady. I bind that spirit of suicide. I curse that spirit of suicide. Go in Jesus' name. Why? Because I have power to bind that spirit. So when that person says, I can't believe I slept so good last night. Why? Because I have power to bind that spirit. Now, don't get too crazy that everything's a spirit. You know? The guy smells bad, you know, online. He's like, oh, I bind that spirit of odor. No, you know, come on, funky spirit. Okay? Listen, there's no funky spirit. All right? But it works the same way too. Is this, this so? So what? So, uh, spirit of suicide. I bind the spirit of suicide and I loose the spirit of peace. I loose freedom in his life. Yeah. What did they try to say about Jesus? They said, "Oh, no, stay here." So, he's, oh, he thinks he has power to forgive sins. They were already trying to limit him. Now, honestly, obviously, you don't have power to to forgive sins. Only, only the blood of Jesus can do that. But what I'm saying to you is that people will try to limit you. And it's all in how you view yourself. If you want to believe that he's the Christ, the son of the living God, that if you believe that Jesus is powerful, if you believe, and we're going to get more into the kingdom, but if you, if you believe he's called to establish his kingdom on the earth, if you believe that we're supposed to be a church of influence in our city and change our city and stuff. See, see, see here's the thing. I say we're supposed to change our city. And, and, and it's amazing how many of you don't believe that. Listen, I'm not, don't, don't worry about the spirit. I'm not trying to condemn. Listen, come on, just hear my heart. Just let me preach my message. I'm not trying to condemn. But it's amazing how many of us don't believe that. Oh, no, no, no. There's only 70-something people here. How are we going to change our city? I know how we're going to do it. What I bind on earth will be bound in heaven. What I loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. So in, in a moment, we're going to pray. You know one of the things we're going to pray? We're going to pray for our building. Okay. Well, five of you that are with me, that's good. That's all I need. I only need one other. The Bible says I only need two or three. So that's cool. It's more than the, it's more than the biblical requirement. I only need two or three. So that's cool. That's all right. That's okay. 
You know why? Listen, I don't need to have a building. I don't, I, I don't want to see Tina here on Friday nights setting cables up. Mark setting cables up. Everybody, Craig setting cables up. Everybody, you know, over here lugging this around. Oh, no, no, well, that's, that's good for servitude. It, it creates a spirit of servitude. No, it doesn't, man. It gets people tired. <laughs> Praise God for the servants. So, so here's the thing. Your mind can say, Marcus, do you know how much real estate costs in L.A.? This place doesn't have parking. This place, it's hard to find parking. Well, let me tell you something. For that guy, that's cool. Well, he can, just, he can just say, well, that's the kind of God we serve. Or we can just say, I serve a big God. I serve a, an impossible, miracle, m- powerful, miracle-making, powerful God that anything that God will send people from everywhere to help make the dream happen. Right? So, so, so here's the thing, though. Do we pray with a hesitation? Do we pray with, do we, do we tend to pray where, well, God, if you just will, hear me. If you just will, do this. Well, Pastor Arnold, what if he doesn't? That's not the question asked. The question is, what if he does? What if he does? Because my only responsibility is to live by faith. He did not call me to live by doubt. He called me to live by faith. So I have to leave the results up to him. My job is to live by faith. My my child's acting a fool. I bind that spirit of rebellion. Oh, he's just a little kid. No, no, I bind that spirit of rebellion. I bind the spirit of rebellion. Oh, no, he's ADD. I bind that in the name of Jesus. I declare my child is smart. He's blessed. He's intelligent. He's going to be a college graduate in the name of Jesus. Supernatural wisdom. I loose supernatural wisdom over my child. Come on now. It's all about what you believe. You want to float on the clouds and just let Kesara Sara happen? Or do you want to do what God said, and that is he's given you keys to do things. He's given you keys. What do keys open? They open doors. Keys open doors. But what if the keys that he was talking about was the key that there's an open door, that there is no separation between heaven and earth? So now all of a sudden your prayers that you think have to go like this, they just go like this, and then you begin to speak into the atmosphere things. Pastor Erwin, but that sounds like that whole name it, claim it stuff. I'm not telling you to sit there and start, oh, I just, I just speak my SL 600, and I just, you know, I just speak that the house on the hills and, and, all, and all this stuff. And Church, come on now. Listen, what does the Bible say? Those who are led by what? Come on, church. Those who are led by what? The Spirit of God are what? The sons of God. You got to be led by the Spirit. You got to be ready. Holsters ready. That when it comes time, bam, you unload. And for those that are watching on video, I'm talking about spiritual things. And I'm talking about, okay, just in case people get in trouble. Come on. I bind, I bind that spirit of poverty. I bind that, what, have you ever been, wait, just confusion, you can't think, str- I bind that spirit of confusion in Jesus' name. I command it to go. I bind that spirit of confusion. Why? Because I understand that he's the Christ. It's not, it's not me, it's him. It's the Christ, the son of the living God. What I loose. Father, I just loose that building. I loose it. You have it for us, Lord. Whatever's tying it up, whatever hindrances, if it's money, if it's, if it's some people that have something negative against us, if it's this, that, or the other, come on. You got to bind that spirit of poverty. Let's give Marcus a hand. Thank you, Lord. All right, Marcus, you can sit down. Come on. Praise God. Let's finish here, okay? Let's finish. Hallelujah. Come on, this is just the Word of God. You don't, you, 
It's so funny how if you just preach the word, the word alone is powerful. <laughs> you, don't, you don't have to get super creative, you know, all right? Listen, I also say to you that you're a Peter on this rock. I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And can you guys say that with me? Whatever. Whatever Whatever you loose on earth will have been loosed in heaven. Then he commanded his disciples that they should tell no one that he was Jesus the Christ. Listen, church. Lathan, if you can come. I want to say this to you, church. He's already there. Look at that. He's just like, yeah. Church, we're going to, we have to, listen, we have to talk about this. We have to get more into this because it's not just only about your personal life. It's about this church. And if we're going to be a church that is going to influence the world and change our city, we got to learn how to bind and loose. Because when the enemy picks up his head and he tries to come, that spirit of hindrance, those hindering spirits. Have you ever prayed? You know, you need to pray for hindering, against hindering spirits. You're trying to do something and trying to do something, and you just get to the edge and then just, no, man, I bind those hindering spirits. I bind them in the name of Jesus. I bind those hindering spears, those roadblocks that are trying to come against. Listen, you have authority in the name of Jesus to say these things. Come on now. Here's, a, here's another one. I'm going to pray for you. I lose the spirit of favor. I lose favor on your life. Listen. Here's something so awesome. I got up in a service months ago, and uh, I, I just got up, and I said, because I knew God spoke to me. I said, there's someone you can't sleep. I said, you have uh, insomnia. I said, you can't sleep. And I said, it's been going on. And I, and, and I, said, uh, uh, I said, I bind that insomnia in the name of Jesus. And she was on that medication. It's the strongest one. Ambien? Ambien? How do you say it? Ambien, yeah. So, so um, she was on it for six years. She couldn't go to sleep. She says it's such a strong medication. She didn't know when the doctors uh, prescribed it for her how strong that medication was. And I says, man, I just, I bind that spirit. And I declare you're going to sleep peacefully. And she, she says, when I said that, she says she grabbed it. She just grabbed it. She says, I felt like I just grabbed it. I said, that's for me. Pam. Pam told me, she says, <laughs> this is like five, six months later. I saw her before I left. She was crying, and she goes, Pastor's still sleeping like a baby every night. She goes, I haven't touched the pill for the next day. She goes, that night, didn't take one pill. She goes, I've been sleeping like a baby ever since. Why? Because you just loose those things into the atmosphere. Just lose it. You don't even have to touch people. You just gotta speak it. I like to I like to pray over people and touch them and stuff. But sometimes you just most of the time you just have to speak it into the atmosphere. You begin to speak it, and faith arises and power is released. But that'll happen in every area of your life. That doesn't mean you're not gonna have trials. Doesn't mean you're not gonna be tempted. Doesn't mean you're not gonna stand in front of a mountain. But, but it's so funny. What did he say to tell us to do? He told us to speak to the mountain to move. It's so funny. You know what I'm saying? So we, we want to say, oh, we're all, it's, 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 it's a mindset. It's, it's where the enemy has us bound right here because we say, oh, well, we're always going to have mountains. Yeah, you know what? Mountains are going to stand up. But it's so funny how he told me to speak to the mountain to move. Have faith. Small as a grain of mustard seed. And if you'll say to that mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in your heart, but shall believe that what you say will come to pass, it shall be done. And you know what the most powerful about, about this yet? And it hasn't hit yet, trust me, it'll hit in a couple of weeks. I'm just telling you because I know how this works. 
Because right now we're, we're, we're focusing on the part of like just speaking and there's power. The most powerful part of this message that, that is going to, light bulbs are going to start going off, is the part that there's no distance between heaven and earth. That's the key. There's no distance. There's no separation. So when you begin to speak things, God says what you say, it's covered. It's in the same place because you, I have loosed you into the earth to establish my kingdom on the earth. You don't, listen people, you don't just exist to exist. You exist for a purpose. You've been called to establish his kingdom on the earth. All of you. All of you. Bow, close, close your eyes, bow your heads for a moment. Let me pray for you. We're going to pray for some things, all right? I'm going to let you go. I want to say this to you. As you're just closing your eyes and bowing your head, you know that God loves you so much and he wants you to experience the Christ, the son of the living God. You know, other people may say, there's other people in this room that have said Jesus is the Christ. There's people outside of this room that said he's not the Christ. And he's just, he's just the prophet. He's just this. But I want to ask you, who is he to you? Is he Jesus, the Savior of the world? Is he the Son of God who died on the cross for your sin and for my sin? And, and maybe you've never made that decision before. Maybe you haven't received Jesus in your heart. Maybe you've never committed fully to the Lord. And before we leave this place, if inside your heart, your heart is screaming, saying, you know what, I, I'm just done. I, I'm going to turn my heart and my life over to God. I'm tired of running and I'm tired of playing games. I really want to serve the Lord. I'm not inviting you to religion. I'm inviting you to a relationship with Jesus. If I never ever saw you again, but you said yes to Jesus, then the greatest work has already been done is that you would know the master, that you would know Jesus. So if you're here today under the sound of my voice, say, Pastor Erwin, will you pray for me, please? Because I need, I need Jesus in my life. I want you to just slip your hand up right where you are and say, Pastor, I need Jesus in my life. God bless you, sister. Anyone else? Jesus, I, I give you my heart. I'm not going to run anymore. I'm not going to run anymore. Jesus, I give you my life. I give you my life, God. I'm not trying to be religious. I want Jesus to be my Lord and be my Savior. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God. Sweetheart, just stand right where you are. Just stand right here. Just right where you are. You don't have to come forward. Take my hand. Come on. I want you to pray with me. Repeat this after me. Say, Father, I give you my life. You are my Lord, my Savior. I've made mistakes, but I ask you to forgive me. Come into my life in a greater way. Thank you, Jesus for dying for me, being my God, being my Savior. I do believe you're the Christ, the Son of the living God, the one who died for me. So I give you my heart. I give you my future. I give you my emotions. I give you my purpose. I give you my destiny. Fill me with your spirit. Use me on the earth. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So, Father, we just pray right now. We lose your goodness and your peace and your presence. Father, use your daughter on the earth, Father. Use her, Lord. She's powerful and mighty. You've given her great gifts and talents, Lord. So use her, Lord. Unfold the greatness that's inside of her, Lord. Use her, Father God, in the name of Jesus. That's your presence, Lord. I ask you, Father, I'm asking you, that, Father, in the middle of the night, Father God, that she would wake up and your glory would be upon her. That she would...